One thing that I can respect about the Bible is the fact that it doesn't sugarcoat anything. It gives you the raw, good, bad, and the ugly. Other ancient historical documents, such as those of the Egyptians, hide their flaws and their defeats and primarily present the victories, the positives, or the good side in order to make themselves look good and not bad. Heck, even some more modern history does the very thing. But the Bible has the good, it has the victorious and the miraculous, but at the same time, it also has the more disturbing, revolting, and ugly sides. The Bible gives a more accurate portrayal of life and history. Not everything is good all the time. You have your bad times, you have your failures, you have your foolish and stupid moments, you have your good examples and your bad examples. Quick side note, just because something is in the Bible doesn't mean God condones it. The Bible gives you uh, accurate portrayals of people's lives and their actions and it also gives you the commandments and suggestions and principles of God. And it's up to you as the reader to compare what God said versus what people did and determine what the good examples are to follow and what the bad examples are to not follow, to avoid, or maybe even to try to learn from. If the Bible was just a book of a group of people that followed God and everything was just peachy cream for them because they had God it would have been completely unbelievable. But because we see that people of God suffered, they had doubts, they had insecurities, they had fears, they failed, they sinned, they struggled, but through it all, God was still with them. It makes the account more human, more relatable, more inspiring. I mean, think about it. There's some pretty jacked up people in the Bible and some jacked up things that were done in the Bible. But through it all, God was still speaking or seeking to deliver, save, and befriend these people. And let's be real, we're some pretty messed up people ourselves. But if there's one thing the Bible shows us, it's that God doesn't push away the ugliness. He embraces it. He wants us to come to him as jacked up as we are so that we can grow in him and be more like him. So if you are an outcast, a reject, a misfit, a sinner, a heathen, then God wants you. If you are holy, righteous, pure, and perfect in your own sight, then God can't really work with you. Don't you realize that the people who Jesus always rejected were the uber-religious and pious who thought that they were above and better than everyone else. And the ones that he embraced, the ones that Jesus embraced, were the ones that the pharisaical folks ignored and ostracized. The Bible is filled with flawed people who were pursued and saved by a loving and perfect God. Same is true today. You don't have to clean yourself up to come to God, despite what the church folk may say. Come to him as you are, commit to him, establish a loving relationship with him, trust and obey him, and your life will change through him. No one in the Bible was perfect before coming to God. So if you're not perfect, congratulations, you qualify to be part of God's family. Even if your siblings may not accept you, just know that your father does. And as always, think on these things.